Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies coming at you with another Horus Heresy tutorial. This time it is on none other than the beautiful new Horus Ascended model. Games Workshop very kindly sent me out one of these early so that I can get it built and painted and show you guys for the channel. Now, normally these particular miniatures that get sent out to Games Workshop or from Games Workshop get sent to these kind of world-class painters. Um, and they obviously do their own videos on building and painting the thing. But I find that usually those tutorials are kind of hard to follow. They're to a level or a standard that I, I can find completely unachievable. And um, so what I'm going to try to do here today is uh, show you guys how to get this model built and painted for the average painter like me and for, well, 90% of the, the hobbyists out there. So hopefully this video is helpful and hopefully it will alleviate some of your fears about picking up this miniature and you'll be able to add it to your collection no problem. I just want to say that if you are enjoying my content and um, there's two main ways that you can uh, support me and help me get uh, this channel to even greater heights. One, make sure that you do hit that subscribe button. About 60% of the people that watch my videos are not subscribed currently. So if you take two seconds out of your day uh, and uh, hit that subscribe button, it would mean the world to me. And two, if you want to see the channel go kind of even crazier again uh, and help me keep the lights on, there's links to things like my Patreon below. My Patreon is getting a revamp currently uh, with a bunch of extra benefits. Uh, the biggest new update to my Patreon is that there is now every week a custom video that is just for Patreon members. So that's every single week. That means 52 extra videos a year. And this week's video is actually on the base of this Horus miniature. So you'll see about halfway through this video, you'll see him appear on his beautifully painted base. If you want to know how to do that, check out the links to my Patreon. Without further ado, guys, let's get into the video. So this is my, I think, sixth Primark that I've owned. And this is the first one that I've seen, which is triple stacked. It is the largest black box miniature that I've seen so far. Maybe other Primarks come with the triple stack containers, but I haven't seen it yet. So... Is going to be a chunky boy with lots of details and lots of bits. It comes with really, really high quality instructions this time in this little pamphlet, which is super handy. No other Primark has had anything like this, so that was kind of like a nice uh, breath of fresh air. Something that I think all Primark should come with because sometimes it can get a little confusing as to how to put them together. Like I said, it is a triple stack of boxes to keep all those parts. I got the miniature assembled. Obviously he's not stuck to his base, he is just put together. I've glued him to this temporary 60 millimeter base so I can get him sprayed up, sprayed black, and then sprayed gray sear, um, like a zenithal. Give me some nice shadows to work with with the contrast. I have decided that my Horus is going to be in the, the Sons of Horus style, so with the, the turquoise green armor, as opposed to the black armor. Most people will do the black armor for Horus, which is the very late heresy color. I prefer the... Uh, the mid heresy color scheme, which is the kind of bluey scheme, which is what I'm gonna go for here today in this video. I know technically he's wearing his new suit of armor in this uh, reiteration, which of course would be the one that is painted in the black scheme. But I think it's gonna be a million tutorials out there and showing you how to paint it black. I thought I would do a little bit different and go for it with that blue. It'll match you with my Sons of Horus Army a lot better. And I like the color of hell a lot more than I like black. So Pterodon Turquoise was used and it was applied over all of the armor panels that are supposed to be that green. I did have reference pictures taken from Warhammer Community um, to kind of see where colors were meant to go, what bits were trim, what bits were flat armor colors, and, and so on and so forth. So with that reference, I managed to get a base coat of the Pterodon Turquoise everywhere it was supposed to go. From there, we're going to jump over to a Black Templar contrast, and this is just for kind of a couple of niggly bits around the miniature. So there's things like uh, all of the soft seals in between his armor joints in the palm of his hand. And we're also going to use the base coat things like his claws. We're going to get them blacked in. Uh, his kind of twin bolters that are on the back of that fist, we're going to get them blocked in as well. And then there's like pipe work and stuff. Once again, using those reference pictures to find all of those parts and then giving them a quick coat of Black Templar. Uh, just to start kind of pulling all those colors apart. After that, we are going to jump over to Retributor Armor and do, without a doubt, the most tedious step of painting this entire model. We are going to base coat all of the trim with Retributor Armor Gold. There is no easy way to do this. There is no way to speed up this process. There is just patience, a fine pointed brush, And that's it. Just take your time, go around. Like I said, get the reference pictures. 
by the time you guys can buy this guy, you'll be looking at pictures of him from the Forger website. So it'll be better quality images, 360, hopefully, so you can rotate them around and see all the different parts of trim on the miniature. And just, yeah, buckle in for about kind of 30 minutes of painting gold trim. <laughs> on a model like this, you know, you don't really mind. It is porous after all, the big bad of all big bads. And uh, he deserves the time to put in to get this kind of stage right. And as soon as I saw this stage, I knew I made the right decision when I came with the color of armor that I wanted. I really do love that look. Flesh Terror's red contrast was used to uh, base coat in all of the tassels on this model. So he has um, wrapping around his shoulder guards and uh, going in and is like loincloth style thing. So these are usually a little bit darker red than the cloak that he's wearing. So we're going to use Flesh Terror's red to base coat all the tassels. And then we'll jump up to something a bit brighter like Blood Angel's red to base coat in his cloak. I said blood angels red contrast we're going to get a nice solid coat of this all across his cloak inside and out none of that two-tone cloak shenanigans inside outside being different colors not a big fan of that at all so just make sure you get a nice solid coat and make sure it does not pool anywhere so like as this is drying just kind of pay attention to it make sure you remove any of the the paint if it's if it's forming any blobs on the bottoms or any pooling just make sure you're going to scrape it out with the uh, brush this is a really big focal part of the miniature that people are going to want to look at so you want to make sure you get it right snake bite leather was the contrast of choice to base coat in all of the furs going across his shoulder this is a lovely kind of rich brown color and it worked a treat to get the uh wolf motif style thing um across his back base coated in. Contrast goes on fur so well, it's criminal. Next, I'm gonna jump over to Lead Belcher and base coat in any of the metallic parts that are left on this miniature. So the kind of barrels and the rest of the, the guns on his uh, wrist. And there's some spikes coming out of the furs on the top. And then I'm going to jump over to the wash stage next. But what I actually did was after I did the red on the cloak, I went back in with the gold and painted the, the, the gold trim around the cloak. I forgot to include that bit in the video. I do apologize. But yeah, before you jump over to the wash stage, just make sure that you get all that trim done on the cloak as well as all the armor. Gullum and Flesh was used to add the first coat to his face. Once again, a very quick and easy step. Takes about two seconds to do. Oh, I did include it, excuse me. So yeah, just add the gold trim to the cloak. And this is the model with all of the base coats on. He is ready to be washed and start the layering process. So as is tradition with all of my Sons of Horus from here on now, I'm gonna wash it with null and oil, just to darken it all down, settle into all the recesses and uh, give it a really nice jumping off point for the layering process. So this is the new 18 millimeter pot of Nolan oil. So it's a lot thinner. So it flows really nicely. It doesn't pull as well as bad. And it's not gonna stain any of the brighter colors too bad. So it's gonna work the treat. So here it is with the shade applied to the entire miniature. And then we're just gonna give it its time until that is fully dried before we can go on and start layering it. So here it is fully dried. Now, the order in which I'm gonna do the next few steps may be confusing to you, but I think it is the fastest way to do it. Uh, some of the steps might scare you guys, you might think that I'm insane, but hold out until the end of the video, until the final result, and let me know if you think I was insane in the comments below after that. So we're gonna start with our first coat of Sons of Horus Green. Yes, I said first coat, we are going to do two uh, thin coats of Sons of Horus Green, but it's not going to be one after the other. We're gonna do one coat on the armor, then we're gonna do some work on the gold and the fur, and then we're gonna come back and tidy up the armor again. The first coat of Sons of Horus is just to get that tone right, um, and just basically to start building up the color. As you can see, I'm being very careful not to hit the gold at this point. As that gold is now base coated and washed, it would be difficult enough to go back and touch up any mistakes. The 
highlighted color really is beautiful. I am usually not a big fan of doing the bad guys ever, um, which is actually a problem for me because I'm actually enjoying painting the Sons of Horus for the Horus Heresy more than I'm enjoying painting anything else for the Sons of, uh, for the Horus Heresy. So this is a serious problem. I don't want to be the bad guys, but the army is turning out really nice. Now I've got Horus Ascended to lead it, so we're in real hot water. So after we get the first coat of the Sons of Horus green on the armor, it's time to work on the gold. Now, like I said, I'm showing you guys tips and tricks to get this done fast. So I'm gonna go for a large base brush and I'm gonna use this as a dry brush. I just get better control with it. I forgot to show the paint, but we're jumping up to Iron Breaker, which is a nice silver. We're now going to dry brush all of the gold parts of this model, which once again, you may scream at me and think that I'm insane, that I'm gonna hit all the green. We are gonna hit parts of the green and that's fine. We're gonna do a second coat on the green to touch up any mistakes they're gonna hit with this. But you've got two choices. You can either do it this way or you can spend an hour, an hour and a half painstakingly highlighting gold um, with a fine pointed brush, which I just think is absolutely ludicrous. I'm gonna do this dry brush for about, I don't know, two minutes just to make sure I get it all the way I want it. And then it's about five minutes to relayer the Sons of Horus and that's it. So we're talking about five minutes work versus a, a very minimum an hour's work to highlight all of the uh, gold. I don't think you'll get as nice a result as that on it. You can't really see how nice the result is because we've hit the, the green, but we'll go back and fix that in a minute. We're now gonna use the same brush and we're gonna get the furs dry brushed up. So we're gonna start with Zandri Dust and give all of those furs a nice dry brush to build up the tone. And you can see the difference that the dry brush is doing to those furs already. And this is the thing, some people put certain models on pedestals. Uh, they should only be painted by a certain type of painter or they should, they have to get to a certain result or else it's a waste or, you know, have to do it justice or all those buzzwords that people use that you should just immediately ignore. This is your miniature. You painted it a standard you're happy with and get it on the tabletop. I'm now going to jump up once again. I'm going to use a Shapti Bone for the last dry brush on the fur. This is going to be a slightly lighter dry brush just to catch the very tips of all the fur follicles and give real nice depth to the fur. I really do love the effect that this does on the miniature. And like I said, we're gonna go in after this and touch up all of these Sons of Horus green. And when we're finished that step, the model looks so neat and tidy and everything looks kind of highlighted and crisp and it looks great. And then we just have to start bashing out detail. So back to Sons of Horus green. And as you can see, one slick coat over it and it gives a really nice tidy result straight away. That's because we built up that color with the first coat of Sons of Horus green. Remember, the dry brush will not have gone into all the recesses. It will not have gone into everywhere. So we're not, we don't need to highlight everything with Sons of Horus. It's just the more raised parts that we were going to hit with that dry brush that we need to tidy up and fix up. So this is a real take your time moment because obviously the gold is now finished in my head. So we do not want to be hitting it with any of that Sons of Horus green. And there are so many funny angles with these gold trim. There's lightning bolts coming out of everywhere and little sharp corners and little tiny rivets. And... Okay, so that is the Sons of Horus highlighted for the second time. And I think we're really getting somewhere with this model now. But we have more work to do, so let's get to it. So we're gonna work on those kind of Sons of, uh, Sons of Horus eyes that are all over him. He's got kind of four of them. Uh, predominantly on the body, center of the chest, center of his like belt buckle and both his knees. And there's actually another smaller one just off his left shoulder pad. So there's five of these things and they basically look like the Eye of Sauron. So we're gonna start by base coating them with Blood Angel's Red Contrast. These next few steps are gonna be quick and snappy just to give you guys a really quick overview of how I did them. So first of all, just block in those areas with the Red Contrast paint. Then we are gonna jump in with uh, uh, Troll Slayer Orange and just give that a quick highlight. Like I said, nothing special. As you can see, it's almost like a little stipple that I'm doing around the center. They're all different sizes, so you're going to have to be more or less careful depending on which one you're doing next. 
After the orange is stippled in, we are going to go in with some yellow. For that, we're going to go for flash kits yellow. Same idea, just much less. We're going to go in with that like slight little stipple around uh, the uh, center kind of eye slit that it has. Just add that touch of yellow. Very minutely on these parts. And then after that, we are going to jump up to Abaddon Black. And we're going to paint basically the, uh, the center of all the eyes with black. And that really, really does tie it all together and give us that nice kind of bang of color in the center of the model. Super simple step, but it adds quite a lot to the model. After that, we're going to start the process of working on the face. So working on the face is going to be a funny one because once again, it's going to be kind of kind of different stages doing different things. So we're going to start with Cadian flesh tone um, and we're going to layer up the face for the first time. Now obviously, this is an important model. His face is a focal point. I know people are afraid of painting faces. This one has quite a lot of detail in it. So it's quite easy to know where to put the highlights. He's got deep creases in his face that obviously you're going to leave nice and dark. He's got obviously like higher bits with his cheekbone, his nose, chin. On his bald head, obviously, you're going to uh, paint up. So we are just going to get one nice solid coat of skin. And then what I did is I actually painted in the eyes. So I just blacked them in uh, or whited them in and then put a dot of black in the middle. Put a little bit of white paint on his teeth. And then I gave the face a wash of Reikland sh uh, Flesh Shade. Making sure that it settled into the eyes and the teeth as well. And then we're going to come back and relayer that when that's fully dry. So while waiting for that to dry, we're going to go into Carrick Stone and base coat all of the skulls that are across this miniature. So he's got a couple on his waist and then there's a couple built into uh, the furs on his back. All we want to do is get a nice smooth coat on those. And then we're going to go jump up again to use Shapty Bone to give them their final highlight. These are just simple little bits and pieces. There are other small parts that I might miss in this video um, on the model. Some severed heads, which, you know, easy enough to paint a face with some black fur, uh, black hair, which is what I did for them. And other than that, I don't think I really missed anything else. Okay, now it's time to go back to that Cadian flesh tone and relayer that face. Once again, it's the same bits again, but it's gonna be a really nice subtle highlight because we've already used this color previously. And it's going to be on the exact same bits again a little bit on the chin cheeks nose and then a little bit running up the forehead and it's gonna look absolutely stunning after that we're going to jump up to mephiston on red and we are going to layer up the red parts of this model so we're going to start with all the tassels hanging down from his arms and form his uh, loincloth area. And then after that, we are going to go for the giant, beautiful cloak that he wears that's billowing in the wind behind him. I used Mephiston Red for this. I actually showed you the pot of normal Mephiston Red. It's almost like a bit of a cheat, but I actually used the the airbrush version of Mephiston Red. It's like it's almost like a pre-thinned version. Not everyone's gonna go buy a pot of that just for certain things. So it's obviously, of course, fine to use normal Mephiston Red and add a touch of water to thin it down. But I just find the airbrush version is a really, really good paint. It gives me beautiful, smooth results. And that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna basically focus on those big folds. I'm gonna leave the dark red in all the recesses and all the deepest folds of the, the cloak and all of those bits that are kind of raised up or billowing outwards, I'm gonna get them a nice highlight of this red. And you can see here that it is quite a stark jump from the base coat, but wait until you see the entire cloak done in it. It does actually look quite nice. And here I'm going to the next fold. And as you can see, I'm leaving the uh, recess nice and dark. I'm also sticking with the same direction with my layering which will give you kind of a smoother, more believable finish. After that, we're gonna jump up to Iron Breaker and just quickly highlight any of the metallic parts that we did some base coats on previously. So once again, the spikes that hold on his big fur pelt 
uh, some of the bits and pieces of his bolter and then there's some chains on the model holding on the skulls and the severed heads one bigger one is going through uh, his cloak on the back there's two coming down from uh, basically his shoulders holding on some tassels and stuff and connecting the cloak to his shoulders so you just want to spend a little bit of time doing that And as you can see, I'm super pleased with the result of the cloak. It is so rich and so vibrant and really does jump out uh, from the model. And obviously, Horace is going to be charging forward in a fight, so you're going to be looking at the back of him, so it's really nice that the cloak is done. So this is the uh, full Horace Ascended miniature fully painted. I really hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it taught you a few bits and pieces. This is him on his base, his big, beautiful textured base. This base I am doing a full tutorial of as well, and that is the video that will be available to all of my Patreons as of right now, the exact same time this video went live, the Patreon one did as well, so you don't have to wait at all. So you guys can enjoy that and get your full Horse Heresy, uh, Horse Ascended model fully painted. As you can see, he comes out of his nice base, looking pretty slick, ready for the fight. And obviously when he is not being fought with and he is just going to go on a shelf looking beautiful in the middle of his army you're just going to put a pop him back on his scenic base as you can see he slides in no problem the back bit slides into place and there we have it okay guys and there we have it one horse ascended miniature painted up and ready for the tabletop using contrast a few dry brushing a few select highlights and it's done anybody can achieve what i did in this video here today and i hope you're happy with the results if you are make sure you do the usual hit the like subscribe and check out all my uh, links below i just want to say a big shout out to all of my current patrons without you guys i wouldn't be able to keep doing what i'm doing so from the bottom of my heart thank you so much for doing it including my five top patrons you guys are absolute heroes thank you guys so much for watching at the end of the video i'll see you in the next one